This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Samsung Smart TV. Hey, it's time to get our HD Nation started. First up, Dolby's got a brand new sound. Over the weekend, I tweeted about Dolby's new sound technology called Atmos that they are debuting with a new movie coming out. Brave. Brave. Pixar's brave. Always, man. It's going to be cool. Uh, one of the neat things about Atmos, uh, as far as creating high quality sound for commercial cinema, is something called the pan through array effect. Basically, they're getting away from authoring audio for a fixed number of channels, like, say, 5 <laughs> 1 or 7 1. And if you consider custom theaters or, or commercial cinema theaters, the speaker configurations are about right. as varied as they get. Get from theater to theater. If you if you go to Dolby Labs, they have rooms in there where there's literally like a hundred surround sound speakers in you know engaged in sort of a spear around you, tucked off in corners, <laughs> um, and. Dolby's kind of in a situation where they want to give professional sound mixers more tools to, make a, to create a more realistic mix, but it's really frustrating for them because most of the time, like when it gets to consumer, it's just dumbed down to 5.1, and a lot of times maybe the sound engineers or the sound mixers, the, the people creating the soundtracks, are sort of stuck with tools that aren't as impressive as totally. they like. They are trying to recreate the experience as if you were standing there, right. and the Atmos technology. In real life. It appears, at least to me, to more accurately describe that soundscape created by the audio engineers and by, in a sense, virtualizing the number of audio channels to make it as infinite as possible for those content creators, it should enable a simplified, accurate playback on any speaker configuration, which I think is pretty cool. Now, we're not talking about turning a pair of speakers into a surround sound system, <laughs> but Atmos looks to take high-fidelity multi-channel cinema productions and package that audio up into basically something that can be used from anything from custom configuration uh, commercial cinemas to our more modest home theater setups in the future, hopefully. That's what I'm looking forward to. And hey, if it just sounds better and it, and it takes that theater you're going to now and can make it sound even better with the content that they're delivering nowadays, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. It's a very good thing. And we have three theaters within 20 miles of where I'm standing right now that feature this technology, including Dolby's own beautiful uh, theater that they have private. So I've just gotten used to going to Costco and seeing like the 80 inch Sharp television in there for a relatively small amount oh. of money. So Sharp's actually announced a 90 inch television, uh, part of Sharp's 74, 745U series of 3D televisions. The screen is almost four feet Whoops. high hey. and six oh, feet eight inches <laughs> wide. Six a, foot eight wide. A mere 141 pounds without the stands and quote, less than five inches deep. Is that with or without the stand? That's without the stand. <laughs> still though, I, I, I took out my tape measure last night and I threw it on my I have a queen size bed that I sleep right. in. It's almost that big. Uh, yeah. The length is just about there, but the width is the, the queen size bed is just a little bit wider. So it'll so, it, it's, it's close. <laughs> it's essentially the size of the screen that my projector throws up on the wall. Um, it is going to perform much better than a projector will in bright sunlight. Perhaps. Yeah. And if you're thinking you need this for your rumpus room, the LC90 LE745 <laughs> U is available now at select retailers for a suggested retail price of $10,999.99. Epic. Epic. And THX. I gotta, I gotta check the Amazon on the, that. The good folks at THX would recommend a nine foot viewing distance with a 90 inch LCD screen. Yes. You really have to keep it immersive. So. It, if people are telling you with your HDTV and 1080p content that you're sitting too close, they're probably wrong. And uh, speaking of all things Sharp, take a look right behind me. We recently got in Sharp's LE847 series HDTV. Let me pull up that webpage. Strikingly similar looking webpage, actually. <laughs> Say hello to Sharp's finest edge lit high definition LCD for 2012. And I, I believe it's a beauty. I'm really looking forward to seeing Sharp's full array LED backlit uh, 9 series panel later this summer, but today, Ta-da, the 60-inch LE847U series, quote, the Quattron LED Smart 3D TV, uh, attractively priced at under, just under $2,000 online. Now you sound online. like QVC. Are I know, I really do, I gotta stop that. I, I gotta say, <laughs> just last, over three grand for the 70-incher. Last time you, you looked at a, at a Sharp panel with the extra yellow pixel, you were a little less than impressed. I, it, it seems odd. I it just, it, all traditional TVs, they, they create the pictures we see using a little tiny dot of red, a little tiny dot of blue, and a little tiny dot of green. And, and they combine those lights, those lights together to create any color we look at. Right. And each pixel is that way. And on this screen, they actually added a fourth color, a yellow subcolor, or a yellow pixel. And that, in a sense, has some terrific benefits that we'll get into. But as far as the overall all design, matte finished uh, trim I really liked, as well as the base stand that matches as well. Mm -hmm. It almost kind of matches the on-screen graphics, which, eh, you know, subjective, but I kind of like that, actually. Swivel stand, as noted by Mr. Norton. Construction was pretty solid for a thin yeah. design. Uh, the 60-inch screen we're looking at here has a bit of heft to it, actually, at 60 empirical pounds, or 76 pounds with the stand attached. On the back of this screen, they actually provided recessed areas for the HDMI cable management. Nice. 
It looks nice, but it made for some tight bends when I actually made the connections with the mm. cables themselves. A little iffy there. I just got to be careful with it. Otherwise, it looks nice. Uh, Sharp's Quatron moniker, as we indicated, it's just essentially referring to the screens that feature that fourth subcolor pixel, the right. yellow in particular. Benefits being increased brightness, hopefully less aliasing along curved edges because you're dealing with more subpixels on the panel compared to your traditional screens. Also, when you talk about 3D, having more light coming out of the screen as well. Uh, this panel in particular, the 847 series, comes out of Sharp's state-of-the-art 10th generation or X-Gen facility <laughs> in Sakai City, Japan. Uh, a great city to actually take a look at if you're, if you're searching Google Earth. These X-Gen panels, you mentioned that fourth colored pixel. The design also incorporates a more precise method of laying down the liquid crystal goo for improved contrast, basically blacker blacks. They're actually more precisely able to align the crystals so that when they block light, they're blocking almost all of it, which is what we want when we're trying to create black. And also the aperture, the little holes that light actually comes through on this screen are larger compared to previous designs. More light, brighter picture, all good for 3D. And that's all incorporated into the panels coming out of Sharp's X-Gen facility. Uh, setup was nice, quick, and easy. Uh, Wi-Fi is built in, that makes it nice, and one of the cleaner apps interfaces I have seen on a recent TV, and I really did appreciate that. All of these TVs are being loaded up with apps of varying degrees of quality. Sharp seems to be focusing on something simple, elegant, nice looking with all the stuff you would expect. Although I would like to see more Amazon video, <laughs> just because I'm an Amazon well, see, Amazon Prime seems to be trailing on being embedded in, in Blu-ray players totally and Totally agree. I wonder that. Uh, benchmark results, let me whip up some benchmark numbers here, and I don't want to show that. Let's start off. First, I'd have to say right out of the bat, here it is with its movie mode, the default picture settings right out of the box. I did, only thing I did was switch it to its movie mode rather than the default settings. Much better for a factory calibration. We're seeing all of these red, blue, green values target closer to 100%, especially if we think back to last week's episode with the LG LM6200. This is a good example of how manufacturers with their premium sets would differentiate it by providing a slightly better calibration. And with the color points here, you can see that they're fairly on target for the primaries. Secondaries are a little exaggerated being outside of the triangle, meaning that the colors are just a little more saturated. However, those color controls I talked about, they're pretty good. Uh, I was able, just for joke here, if you were curious about what the standard mode on a TV looks like, uh, here's an example between, here's the TV's movie mode, and here's what the standard mode they, they push on a TV to make it just stand out in a crowd and to get your eyes on it in the store. Incredibly blue, that's the, that's the key feature here. And if you look at the color points where they all shift toward, uh, you can see that the white points move toward blue and even a couple of the yeah. secondaries are moved toward blue. And the colors are well outside of the triangle indicating that they're very saturated. This is pretty standard for every TV's right. standard mode. And this it's is why, blown out. It's this is why I tell you to switch over to a movie mode or a more calibrated <laughs> yeah. mode. Final results I came up with were pretty good overall. I was able to get it pretty well wow. controlled. However, the problem with this set really is that every time I made an adjustment, if there was any kind of on-screen menu on the screen, it would affect the, the test pattern I, I put up. So if I put up green to measure green, and then I brought up the menu to adjust that green, the green would change until I got rid of the menu, making it a funny. very long uh, hassle as far as getting the TV perfected. Um, hopefully that's something they'll be able to adjust in the future. Most TVs, if you bring up a menu, the, the test pattern or the color that's on the screen doesn't shift. This one does a little bit. It's, it's, it's not impossible to work on, it was just a little more difficult. Video processing was decent. However, I'd like to see all 120 hertz or 240 hertz LCDs like this Sharp uh, incorporate basically a separation of what they do to film and video enhancements the way Samsung does. Uh, by default, all of these TVs are, are making our, our film content look like camcorders. Uh, that I'm, I can't really do anything about, but at least provide a custom mode that allows my film to look like film and my video to be more detailed. And overall, if you can't tell, I'm pretty pleased by this TV. Uh, the traditionalist in me does scoff at anything outside of that red, green, blue subpixel norm. But for normal people, <laughs> Sharp's LE847 Quattron LED Smart 3D TV is pleasing to my eyes and my sense of aesthetics. Also, a recent firmware update addressed some picture performance issues. Mm. Uh, another good reason to get those net-enabled HD TVs online. So you can get the firmware updates do for it. your television they or your Blu-ray player. Always do a little extra magic to these after the fact, and it's good to put them online and let them do their update thing. There you have it. I like it. Hey, do you like science? Do you like science fiction? Then catch io9.com's We Come From The Future. From science experiments that glow in the dark to thought-provoking interviews, io9's We Come From The Future gives you a one-two punch of fun and science with a heavy dollop of sass. Catch it every Friday morning at revision3.com slash we come from the future and youtube.com slash future show.
Hey YouTubers, make sure to subscribe to HD Nation to get all the latest HD news and reviews. And if you want to check out the LG LM6200 review that I mentioned, click right here. And now it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Introducing Samsung's all new smart TV with smart interaction technology, plus innovative ways to explore and locate smart content. The built-in microphone on the Smart Touch remote control, face recognition, and the Smart View mobile app all provide unique ways to interact with your TV. Cutting edge TV apps and new signature services, plus web browsing enhance the TV experience. Right now, you can experience advanced overall performance from improved motion clarity to faster web access. Samsung LED TVs feature effective image processing, fast panel speed, and the latest backlighting technology that together deliver the ultimate in motion clarity. Samsung LED televisions are unique in that the picture can be customized to produce optimum clarity for fast-moving sports or action programming while preserving the desired look of film when viewing those cinema classics. Other LCD televisions, they apply the same video processing to film and video that makes feature films look like they were recorded on a camcorder. Samsung's dual-core processors give the ES8000 excellent multitasking performance. In the future, you can upgrade your TV performance and functionality with the Smart Evolution Kit. To learn more about all the features found in the Samsung Smart TV, go to facebook.com slash SamsungTVUSA.